Welcome to the Black Entrepreneur Experience Podcast, inside the business, buzz, and brilliance of Black entrepreneurs. Here is your host, Dr. Francis Richards. What happens in Vegas goes all over the world on Black Entrepreneur Experience, episode 50. Thank you for joining us for Black Entrepreneur Experience. This is where we shine the light on the most successful Black entrepreneurs in the world. I'm your host, Dr. Francis Richards, and we would love for you to rate, subscribe, and share with your friends the podcast. We really, really thank you for listening. And so I am so deeply honored to have with us today, Kay North, a career strategist, She offers coaching services to help you move past the obstacles and land your dream career. Her tagline, I build, I develop, I produce results. Thank you so much, Kay, and welcome to Black Entrepreneur Experience. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You know what? I have given our audience a really brief bio about you. Why don't you fill in the gaps and share with our audience what you would like them to know about you and your company? Okay. So I am Kay. Um, I am a veteran of the U.S. Navy, which is where I discovered my passion for pursuing this field that I'm in. Um, I am very dedicated to seeing people succeed I take other people's success as serious as I do my own. So I'm super dedicated and just happy to work with all the people that I work with thus far. I'm very grateful for this journey. And so tell us, and thank you for being a great American and serving our com- our country. So tell us this. How did you decide that the coaching business that you were in, that you decided to start, what was that aha moment that you knew you were going to be successful? Okay, when I was a recruiter in the Navy, my, I, that's where I discovered my passion and that I was really good at what I was doing. But my first recruit, he was killed. And it, it, it sent me into a stage of depression for like three years. But once I was in depression, I realized that I was losing everything that I love to do. So I decided to reclaim my life. And in reclaiming my life, I um, decided that I was going to venture back into doing recruiting doodle or some capacity of it. So the aha moment came when I tested the idea and I started getting receiving lots of success stories. So I was like, OK, I'm really on to something. People really do need this help. And I'm going to go ahead and make a full page business of it. So are you managing your business full time? Yes. Okay, absolutely. So how do you, Kay, how do you personally define success? Success to me is I define it as a continual progress towards each goal. So it's not just one huge defining moment because I view life in um, stages. Like at this stage in my life, my goal is to develop people, create opportunities and learn. Once I reach my vision for this stage, I'm successful. Again, because at the last stage of my life, those goals I accomplished. Therefore, I was successful. So I I, I view it as a, a continual progress towards each goal, not just one. So what would you tell share with our audience is a daily or weekly habit that you do consistently that is giving you the greatest success? Pray, work and learn. Repeat. Pray, work and learn. Absolutely. And so what is that one valuable lesson you wish you knew before starting your business? I wish I knew that all of the past hurts and experiences was just preparing me for the people that I pour into coaching now. I wish I would have knew that back then. And then it would have made the pains and experiences more. It would have changed my perspective. So pretend that I am a client and I am coming to you. Tell me about that experience. What would I get from Kay and what should be my takeaway when I leave my coaching session with you? If you're a client coming to me, my clients come to me because they're looking for a strategy. They're looking for their what's, their what's next. Most of the people that I've worked with thus far haven't really researched their career fields or um, their potential next level. They haven't did the research on it. And they don't really know how to what to do to get there. So they come to me looking for a strategy, looking for a way in order to reach their next level dream or goal. What we'll do is we sit down, 
we do like some assessments in case you don't know exactly what it is that you want to do. We do some assessments and then we move into exploring different career field options. Part of that exploration is um, seeing how much the career field pays by state or, you know, by location in case you want to move, giving you some options. We look at it to see what additional credentials you may need. We check we uh, check around different job announcements, making sure that you have the qualifications and it aligns with your values and your your morals. We do a complete exploration of each potential career field. After that, we sit down and we uh, establish goals for you. Um, say if you are a high school senior and you want to be a mechanic, then we need to establish goals in order for you to get to that level or get to that that mechanic job that you want. Not after after we establish those goals, we also take it a little further in case you want to sometime someday open up your own shop. So we'll align goals to your career to your career option, and then we'll create a strategic plan in order for you to identify obstacles and um, align solutions to those potential obstacles. Um, figure out resources that'll help you along the way. If money is going to be a problem, then you know, like financial aid or. Uh, family, friends, like we, we identify different resources and solutions to potential barriers by creating a roadmap. And I- so, Kay, what's working well for you right now in business? Partnerships, social media. Any specific social media that has given you the greatest success or are you on all platforms? I'm on all platforms, but I get a lot of re- interaction and business through Instagram. Instagram has been <laughs> so transforming. I think it is because of the use of hashtags. It has brought me so many different people. And also um, Facebook groups. I'm part of lots of international groups on Facebook. So I've been able to work with lots of different people from different cultures. So social media is doing some pretty amazing things. Now, when you got into social media, did you take a class on it or did you do trial and error? How did you figure out these strategies for yourself to give you great, greater success in your business? Um, I did a lot of trial and error, but then there are also groups on Facebook, like Instagram groups, Periscope groups. And I joined those groups and just learned from different people's successes and or errors. Okay. And so what keeps you going? What keeps me going is this job that I'm doing is really a calling. And it's the very place where I struggled the most. And it was it was a defining moment in my life, this this job that I'm doing. So what keeps me going is that I know that there's a bigger purpose in what I'm doing with helping each each person that I that I come in contact with. So that's what that's really what keeps me going, because I know it's not about me. And so how long have you been operating your business full time? Uh, Full time since 2014, but I started in 2008. Oh, okay. And then what were you doing prior to that? Was that when you were in the military or did you say yes? Yes. Okay, it broke up. Sorry about that. So, Kay, tell us, who are your top two influencers in your life and what lessons do they teach you? Oh, my one of them is my high school teacher. His name is Mr. Smotherman. Um, He was my I was in a a business class. It was called DECA. And he introduced me to the business world. So from him, I taught he taught me how to deal with people. Um, There's another uh, lady. She she doesn't probably doesn't even know who I am, but I follow her on social media. Her name is Becky A. Davis, and her story inspires me. From her, I have learned um, tenacity. Mm, Very good. So where do you see the direction of your business within the next two years? I plan to add a recruiting component and get some contracts with outplacement services from some corporate contracts. So, Kay, talk to a younger you. What advice would you give to a younger you? I would tell myself to keep your standards high and to take your time and be gentle with yourself. I was always... No, go on. I was always hard on myself and just lowering lowering my standards in order to fit the people around me. So I would definitely tell me to keep my standards high. 
So was there an epiphany, a moment or a situation in your life that gave you that revelation in reference to be gentle with yourself and to keep your standards high? Yes, it's, it, 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 and it came through lots of disappointment. I got tired of being sad and hurt and angry. So, and it was recently, as a matter of fact, it was recently where I said, okay, I'm sad and I'm angry because I continue to allow the same behaviors from people into my life. Therefore, I have to now know my worth and only accept what I'm worth or more. So that's, it, it's rec- it's still an ongoing process. So, you know, Kay, what we do here is we talk to the most successful black entrepreneurs in the world. And our objective is about, you know, sending the message about buying black, supporting black, for us uplifting each other as black entrepreneurs, and also to get more individuals in our community that looks just like us to become entrepreneurs. So this next question is, Kay, what role or responsibility do you feel you and your company can contribute to increasing the number of black entrepreneurs? Oh, I definitely know that. I'm, I'm actively engaged in that right now. And it's by showing them the way, being a, being an example and showing them what success looks like and how to get there. Because, well, I, I won't say what it looks like because I still only define success by a continual progress. So even as myself, when I was younger, I didn't have anyone showing me the way. So everything was trial and error and I made lots of mistakes. It's our responsibility as business owners to the black community to show them the way, to give them a roadmap and be an example, because that's what a lot of households are missing. And the school system and the judicial system is all miss. It, it, it'll not, you know, knock them on the hand, slap them on the hand when things go wrong. But nobody's really giving a roadmap to how you get there. So our audience may or may not know this. Your business primarily would be considered an online business. Is that correct? You do everything basically on online virtual. Is that correct? Um, I have I have a, a client base in person as well. Okay. And you are in Alabama. The city and state that you launched for your business, K, was that the best area for you to launch? Or do you think it would have been best for you to launch in another city or state? I think it, I think it was the best area for me to launch because it's how I found my niche. It's how I found what was missing. So, but on the terms of another city, I think that small town, small mentality thing kind of plays a role in my area. So I think I would have more reach if I was in a a bigger place. But social media, again, has been a wonderful tool. Now, you know, one of the things that you hear a great deal about is access to capital in running your business. Talk to our audience about what capital did you use to to launch your business? Did you use um, family and friends? Did you crowdfund? Did you bootstrap? Share with our audience, what did you do in reference to raising the capital to start your own company? Okay, so I took an unconventional route. I was working on my master's degree. Of course, military pays for education. But while working on my master's degree, I had additional funds, so I got a student loan. I didn't need all of the funds that my student loan came with, so I used it to start my business. And would you recommend someone use go through that same strategy? Hindsight 2020, do you think that was the best strategy in reference to you funding your business? Would you do it all over again the same way? I would do it again. I would do it again. It's easy to, well, for some, it depends on the person in the situation. If you have the best credit to go and get a business loan, then do so. If you have support to family members and friends who don't mind giving or donating, or even if it's in exchange for a portion of your company, do that as well. So it depends on the different, the person and the circumstance. For me, the best route for me to do it that way was because I was already getting the money for education 
was to also use it to find my own dream on the side. So I would definitely. So do you mind sharing, Kay, uh, a ballpark figure? What did it take for you to, what type of capital, what was the amount to infuse into your business to get started? Um, it was a, a, only about $5,000 because I use, I work from home. Most of my, um, most of my sale is online. So we do video conferencing. I needed money for a website for promotional material for marketing. And then I happened to get a good deal, a corporate contract that allowed me office space. So I've been fortunate with the connections that I've been getting. So I haven't had to put much capital into it. And so tell us, how do you marry, blend, balance your personal life, family life with your business? Oh, that's still an ongoing process as well. So I um I try to stick to a plan and I communicate my schedule with my family. So when they're I'm busy, then I have to let them know up front. This week I'm gonna be fully booked, so I won't be able to be there as much as you might need me to be. So sticking to a plan and communicating. You talked a little bit about um, social media and you talked about how that has been a great resource for your business. Is there any other technology tool or technology platform that is a must have for you in managing your business? Um, scheduling. Scheduling in my calendar. My Google calendar is the best. Also, job. Jot form is a website where you can create different types of forms. So I get a lot of my client intakes or resume uploading um, tasks done through that website. Let's switch gears for a minute. Let's talk about either risk or failure, whichever one you want to define. Take us to that worst moment in business. Tell us that story and what was the takeaway? Okay, the worst moment for me was a horrible partnership. When I had the idea um, of going into business prior to me getting out of the service, I saw the best. I, I think I was looking at the world through rose-colored glasses, and I just saw the positive in everybody, and nobody had a negative bone in their body. So I got into a partnership agreement with someone, and the... um it went, it went really bad. It went really bad. So what I took from that was going forward, whenever I have to do a partnership with, with another company or another business owner, we have to have, um, make sure that there's a common goal, that we have mutual understanding on set objectives, uh, shared values and morals, and it's a win-win situation. So before I, I didn't even, that was to my ignorance. I didn't even think about um, what to look for in a partner. So that's very important. Just like hiring an employee, you need to critique your partners. Talk to the person in our audience. They want to start a business, but they're fearful. What advice would you offer them? Oh, God, fear. Fear is so paralyzing. I would advise them to find a mentor and do it scared. You're going to have to do it anyway. So even if you're scared, do it scared. And, you know, I've heard several of um, the entrepreneurs that have been on the show. They have talked about finding a mentor. How do you actually go about finding a mentor? What do you look for in a mentor? I look for well, mentors was definitely my high school teacher. That was the my business teacher. So he was, he was just like my life mentor anyway. But then once I started doing coaching and he also does coaching, I also looked for someone else that was, um, like at the top of the industry, someone that, that has done exactly what I wanted to do and, and even pushed the envelope and went further. And even I didn't, I don't know the person, um, personally, but I get their books. I, whatever workshops or webinars that they um, have online, I always register and I'm always attending. So this person isn't a direct mentor, but indirectly they're feeding me. And that's it's, it's a great thing. So with me purchasing their products, it's also a, you know, a given a win win situation even in that. too. So what book would you recommend? You talked about books and why. What book would you recommend to our audience and why? Um, 
there's this book. It's called Chess, Not Checkers. And I can't remember the guy that wrote his name that wrote the book, but it's it's the only book out there. Chess, Not Checkers. Um, it's a leadership book. It has been so monumental for my mindset because I am all about strategy and, you know, chess is strategy as well. So that is a good book. Um, but then other than that, there's not one particular book that I would recommend because the people need to read a book that's going to be beneficial and directly related to their industry. So I recommend to find whatever book or whatever author is the top of your industry and get that book. Also, though, and this is going to sound cliche, but it's true. The Bible is full of business matters. It is so full of business matter. It just depends on the person that re- is reader's perspective. I get so much knowledge from the Bible. Now, would you, do you have like a favorite book in the Bible that you would say or that specifically deals with business? Or would you just say, just from the reader's perspective, you will glean from that? Um, well, from the reader's perspective, but also my favorite book is, um, the book of Daniel. Daniel was in, well, you know, he was in government and I I also worked with several different government agencies and stuff with doing career coaching for the youth. So, um, Daniel was definitely a a good book and also Nehemiah. So, but it just depends on, again, what um, the reader is looking for. So is there anything, Kay, that would make you stop? And if it is, what is that? What would make me stop? It would have to be health, health or death. That's only. And you went into your, as a strategist, you went into the field of coaching. If you had all the industries that are out there, if you had to do it all over again, would you continue to go into coaching and into the industry that you went into? Absolutely. 100%. And why would you say that? Because it's fulfilling. It's, 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 it's really giving, it's helping people get to their next place. It's, help, it's helping people live. It's bigger than yourself. So what would you say when you say helping people to live? What would you say would be the biggest achievement so far in your business? Um, one person that I helped, she became the first court administrator, the first black and female court administrator for the state of Alabama. She made history in two segments, the first female and the first black person to be court administrator for the the, the, count in the state of Alabama. So to me, that was that was huge. That was really huge. And then um, just my decision to take to reclaim my life so that I can be able to walk in this calling to me was a bigger achievement because had I not come up out of depression like I was, then I wouldn't even be able to talk right now. So I I can hear someone in the audience saying, can you give us, Kay, two or three tips for someone that may feel like you felt and how would they reclaim their life? Oh, oh, during my depression stage. Um, it, It takes time. It took therapy. So for our community, therapy is taboo, but get it. It's helpful. It's needed. It's beneficial. Um, it took time therapy. It took a willingness. I was determined to see what was, it had to be some sunshine after that storm. So I was determined to get there. Um, it takes, it takes a lot of willpower and support from those closest to you. Don't, don't go at it alone. That's, that. So can you tell us what is the biggest challenge that you face now being an entrepreneur? Um, the biggest challenge right now would be if I could help people see the value in themselves before they take a step and mess up and have to retract. That is my biggest challenge is to help people understand the value in their next step, their next strategic move. So when you say for them to see the value in themselves before they take that step, are you finding your clients are 
like taking the step unconsciously or what exactly if you can kind of draw the, like paint this picture to our audience what is that moment that you're seeing that the majority of the clients are not really seeing the value in themselves and I think another way to spin it what does that do for them once they see the value before they step um, what I'm seeing is complacency once and um, no complacency and the goals stop I've most of the people I've dealt with especially um on the like middle age range they have been in roles or positions for so long for a number of years that they haven't even thought about the what's next or if a job suddenly ends they don't have a plan for what's next or the next strategy they don't they haven't they haven't figured out how to leverage their strengths and abilities that they've learned up until that point in order to take them across the next hurdle. Um, for younger people, what I see is they just simply have no direction. They know they may know um, how like what they want to go to school for, but they know what they're going to go to school for, but not what happens when they get out of school. So I get lots of graduates or um soon to be graduates that have post graduation anxiety. They don't know what's next because they spent their last four years in school and that was just it. So from it it, it varies by age range or uh life stage. So that's what I'm seeing complacency and just lack of direction. So give us three truths you have learned in life so far, Kay. Okay. Um one would be that you cannot work or live in your calling without connecting to your creator. That's one. Um, another one would be you can take a break, but you cannot give up. And then I cannot help everyone. I'm not called to help everyone. So what do you do now when you hit that bump in the road? Oh, that's a good one. I, re I remember my why. Why am I doing this in the first place? And then I just go back to the drawing board. Even even with sometimes I use my own my own product on myself because it works. And that's how much I believe in it. It, it actually works. So sometimes I have to sit down with my own worksheet and say, this is next. This is what I'm fixing to do. And so I just go back to the drawing board. Remember my why. Create another strategy or adjust the strategy that I have and move forward. And so what is your goal for the future for your brand? Oh, wow. Okay. I would, um, I want to be able to, my, 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 my huge dream goal is to own an, uh, to own an island resort and employ all of the people, the native people of that, that island or country, wherever it is. I want to be able to make a, life impact of on a, 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 a culture of people, not even just a couple of people, a few people, but I want to impact, I want to have a significant impact on a group of people. So can you tell our audience, Kay, if you conducted this interview, what is the one question that you wish I would have asked you? And I'd like you to answer that question. Oh, we okay. How I would ask myself, how are you going to ensure that your program is obtainable and um, implemented into the lives of disenfranchised youth, those that want it? That's what I would ask myself. And the way that I would answer my answer to that is even if I have to create a nonprofit or partner with another nonprofit to implement this strategy program into those impoverished areas or those single parent homes or even the court systems to give people a chance, to give people a chance and direction and a roadmap to get to where they're trying to go. That's what I'm going to do. More collaborations, more partnerships. And even if I have to create a nonprofit myself. 
And so you had mentioned more partnerships, even though you did have a partnership and you've you've alluded to it throughout the interview. And I just want to give a greater clarification um, to yep. the audience. And even though one of the worst moments in business was with a partnership, you still personally believe in partnerships. Tell us why and what is the greatest value that it has brought to your business by engaging in partnerships? Oh, yes, I absolutely believe in partnerships. Um, that was just one horrible experience, but that because I didn't do my due diligence. So that was my lesson. But I still wholeheartedly believe in the whole idea of partnerships because it's doing to putting two people together. You get more done putting two organizations together. You make more impact. So if um, partnering with another organization or another business owner is beneficial to all involved as, as long as it's on, you know, a win win situation. So um, I most I partnership is, is a must. You can get a lot done together than separate. Don't ever go at it alone. Thank you for that. So can you share with our audience, Kay, a parting piece of advice you want to offer? Yes. Um, Think strategically, plan ahead, and leverage your talents and skills. So now we've come to the part in our Um, podcast interview where we call it Fun Facts Lightning Round. I'm going to ask you a series of questions and I want you to give us very quick answers. Are you ready, Kay, for the lightning round? Oh, yes. So, Kay, the last movie you saw? Oh, what the hell? You relax doing what? Listening to water. Your favorite singer or rapper? Favorite singer. Favorite singer, hmm, favorite rapper. Favorite rapper would have to be Tupac. And your favorite dance song? Oh, Lord. I don't know if I should, um, <laughs> I don't know if I should say that. Oh, Lord. Okay, um, it will be Juvenile. Back the thing up. What food you eat every week, no matter what? Grapes. And your favorite month? Uh... September. Thank you so much, Kay, for being on Black Entrepreneur Experience. And before we conclude the show, I want you to tell our audience what is the best way for them to connect with you and support your business. Um, you can go to my website. It has all of my conf- my uh, contact information. It's www.knorth.com. Thank you. That's a wrap. Thank you for listening and subscribing to Black Entrepreneur Experience. We would love for you to leave a review and rating on iTunes and share with your friends. For show notes and more episodes, go to www.beepodcast.com. Join us next Wednesday and remember, green is the new black. So keep your bank accounts and your business in the black.